I first want to thank the board um, and uh, if any members of the advisory budget committee are here tonight uh, for their hard work and, and uh, pulling the budget together and, uh, and good luck uh, moving forward with, uh, uh, with refining the budget. Um, I also wanted to uh, acknowledge that today is World Toilet Day. Uh, an issue that is near and dear to my heart. How did you find that out? Well, I didn't see it. In the circles anyway. that I travel in, it's a big deal. Okay. Um, and uh, and to acknowledge that that uh, more than 39 percent of the world's population, over two and a half billion people, do not have access to basic sanitation like a toilet. Um, but that's really not why I came in to uh, to comment today. Um, as you folks move forward with the budget, I uh, wanted to encourage you to uh, try to maintain something close to level spending uh, compared to previous years. Uh, when I was on the board, um, I finished my term three years ago. Um, we had done a pretty good job of that, and, uh, uh, and I know it's very tempting to just to just kind of move forward with the flow, uh, but. Um, now these are, we are still in tough times, particularly with the real estate market. And, uh, and the higher we see our tax rate climb, um, the more it puts, uh, or maintains Lee squarely at the top of the list for the highest tax rate in the, in the county. And one of the most, uh, one of the highest tax rates in our region. So, uh, so please um, I encourage uh, fiscal restraint as you finalize. The budget. Um, uh, as you know, I'm on the planning board, and uh, and we just uh, I know Bob Smith just recently brought the CIP to you folks, and um, uh, I want to commend the CIP committee. They did a great job uh, keeping the increase in the CIP to two percent. Um, however, uh, I think as we all know, there's a there's a bit of an elephant. Uh, Elephant in the room with regard to the CIP. Uh, that CIP that uh, that the planning board approved did not contain um, probably what is the greatest capital improvement project that this town uh, has ever seen, and that is the combination of a new library and a new uh, town hall. Um, so, as you move forward in approving the budget and uh, and refining that CIP, that CIP. Uh, I encourage you to actually insert those dollars that represent uh, future capital improvements like the town center uh, project that's moving forward. Um, this year, uh, we have a, I think everybody's probably received their tax bills. We are well over $30 per thousand. And, uh, and I expect we'll probably stay well above $30 per thousand. Uh, in the years to come, so um, let's try to keep it as close to that as possible. So uh, best of luck to you all. I will try to uh, drop in occasionally and uh, and support you further as you refine the budget. So thanks a lot for all your hard work and uh, happy toilet day. World toilet day. World toilet day. Happy world toilet day to you too. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's not the last. I hope so. Anybody else for public comment? Okay. Uh, Larry. <laughs> Larry. Yeah, I think it'd be either. Larry Kenberg is not going to be here tonight, so we'll move on to Steve Pollock and Randy Stevens. Is Randy here? Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. There he is. You're behind the podium. <laughs> Uh, relative to the cemetery burials, please join us. Oh, come on. I need a room up here. <laughs> uh, I thought so. 
hopefully, hopefully we can reach agreement on this and make it a dead issue. Oh. 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 He's been waiting on that for some time. <laughs> All right, so when I got hired, I got hired under the impression I was had nothing to do with cemeteries except mow them, maintain them. So I'm going to say that now. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, the excavator that we had access to that we were using to bury people, we no longer have access to for $100 which was a discount because a lot of places that are grave diggers are charging $700 to $800 to dig and bury a body. I don't have that kind of money in my budget to do any of that stuff. So what Randy and I talked about was let the funeral homes contract that out and have them deal with the burials of a full body. Cremations are different because you can have your loved one in an urn on your table for three years and then decide you want to bury them. So why make them go find a funeral home to do all that when the sexton or the cemetery trustees can go out and dig the hole and bury and lay out for the cremation. Um, with the full body burial, the sexton or the cemetery trustees would do all the layout and work with <coughs> a funeral home hires to dig and bury the body, and it would take the town completely out of it altogether. Can I interrupt just for a minute? Mm -hmm. this one, because one of the problems I have personally is just understanding the process. Uh, the family, okay, they, they lose a loved one. Under your scenario, they call a funeral home? Yeah, because they, they have to call That's a funeral home. That's the first home. thing they do, they yes. call a funeral home. They have not necessarily purchased a plot yet or anything. They call the funeral home, and then the funeral home in turn calls. They want to be buried in Lee. Do they call the cemetery trustees? Right now, right they, now they, they call the chairman of the cemetery trustees. Okay, so uh, assuming they I, hire the I, sexton. I, I usually get a call in turn. Yeah. Okay. Assuming they hire a sexton, which is, that's... Yeah, they, we're in assuming your, they hire In your one. scenario, the sexton would Custodian. work for the cemetery trustees? Excuse me? The sexton would work for the cemetery trustees? That's how it, I guess it works. Yeah, it would, that's how it would work unless, you know, there's a change in the what they want to be in charge of it all and do away with the cemetery trustees. And the scenario that we have now is cemetery trustees, that's how it works. So, so the, only I, thing I, that, I, I, the only thing that the town of Lee sees is that selling the piece of land. Well, it's the right to be buried. The right to be buried, right? <laughs> and as and we sign these documents for the people Correct. to be buried at that spot. And all of those documents are executed by the cemetery trustees. Okay. In some towns, a lot of smaller towns are going to this because they don't have it because the rates are going up so much. They don't have a dedicated crew to do it. So, like I said, a lot of the small towns are doing it, and they just <clears throat> let the funeral home take care of it. A lot of the towns do a, a small fee that probably the funeral home pays to uh, to lay out the lot, make sure it's done right, and do the paperwork. So the funeral home would call the, the cemetery trustees for the plot, but then they would arrange for the person, whoever he is, with a backhoe and whatever, to do the whole. The funeral home would do that. Yes. The funeral home would do a, that. There's a couple diggers out there that do it, and they just the funeral home pays them direct, much like it was before I was full time. I mean, when I, before I was full time, that's what happened. The funeral home just had a set fee; they paid you that. I can barely remember a long time ago. Well, it was prior to 85, so um, they left the you know, town, really, all the town part of it was just the filing of the paperwork. So we believe that you would do the maintenance, meaning the mowing and the trimming of 
of the 17 so cemeteries that we're talking about, right? right? Yeah, the only thing we're talking about is taking burials out of the equation. Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to understand the, the process. <clears throat> Cremation is a little bit harder because a lot of times they don't go through. At a full burial, you've got to go through a funeral home. So it's not a big deal for the funeral home to arrange for the burial at the cemetery. Cremation is a little different. I was going to look it up. I forgot. I'd say at least between 30 and 40 percent of them are the family does the arrangements. They bypass the funeral home. They go to the New Hampshire Cremation Society or something. And, mm -hmm. Or as Steve said, they, they have them sit around for a while, uh, keep them at home. But that's a little different story because it would be a, <clears throat> a little bit difficult for for them to go back to the funeral home and say, we, you know, it's just awkward. It would be tough for the family to do that, to go back to a few moments they tried to avoid to start with. So, but cremations aren't, you know, you're not talking anywhere near as much money, but in any event, the rates need to be raised. No, no. So, I mean, if the town's going to be involved, the rates got to come up. If the town's not going to be involved, I mean, it doesn't matter. A refreshment <coughs> coming in, there's a charge now, $400 that we collect right now. Right. Yeah. What does that go for? $100, they went hundred dollars for tobacco, mm -hmm. and really all the tobacco does is just digs down the middle of the hole, loads it in the truck, the excess, and puts some of it, usually the slalom and everything, put on plywood. The highway crew typically puts down the plywood, marks it out, puts down the plywood, takes the sod off, cuts the sod, takes the sod off, gets some of the loam out, and then. Uh, tobacco just digs down the middle because it's so rocky up there. If you try to dig along the edge, you're going to have a little six feet wide instead of three and a half feet wide. Um, mm. Then, you know, it's all hand work, shaving the sides off, and digging the corners out, and leveling the bottom out. Uh, so tobacco is really just taking the, the big stuff out. Um, now, there is a guy that will do it for, I asked him, but, you know, one of the grave diggers that does a contract, and he said he would come in and and do and dig the hole for 350. I assume he probably had his own dump truck, dump it in, and uh, set up the plywood one at the front. That's the one that would not come back and fill it in, though, right? right? So if the, if the rate is $400 and paying him 350, I'm still going to fill it in yourself. I don't think you can make it up to it. Well, it gets back to who <coughs> would fill it in. What's that? It gets back to who would fill it in. Right. He's not doing that part. Right. So. It all boils down to as long as the funeral homes are developing it, it just, well, it just saves say a lot dig, of complication. When you say he digs it out, he digs it out and he also trims the sides and, no, and all that. He, he just digs it out. He digs it out. Who he does the sides? The highway department. The highway department yeah. is still going to do the sides? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, not, if, not if you have this guy for 350 <coughs> He'll do it all. The he does it all. He will do it all. Okay. So he won't fill it in. But somebody would have to fill it in. Or you will come back and fill it in, but it's 700, 6, 650, 700 on a weekday, and we want it out on the weekends. So my feeling on this is go with um, Steve's proposal, and let the funeral parlor handle it, and then I guess the cremation one will stick with, as Randy suggests, and stay here in the tunnel way. Has anybody talked to the trustees about it? We tried. I mean, we, we tried to set up a meeting. We tried to set up a meeting. <coughs> And I I'm sent them emails, they got a copy of Randy's summary and said we were going to be talking about it tonight. So. That was our goal to Steve and I and meet with him. I've never met him, so I kind of figured if I was working for him and mowing the cemeteries, he'd want to meet me, but obviously not. So <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they know something we don't. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. In my mind, we ought to draw it up as a procedure and get them to sign off on it. Off of them. That's the way we do it. Can I ask Mr. Stevens a question? Are you now the official sextant no, or are you still? I am not. That's... I, I will not be until this all gets straightened out. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So after it gets straightened out. And I won't be a sextant, but I will be. If, you want me, if they want me to be a custodian, I'll consider that. What's the difference? The What's statute the says it's either a custodian or a sextant. Oh, it's, so it's the same job but different name. Right. Okay. Actually, I thought the uh, cemetery superintendent was a pretty good title. Hmm. Um. So, again, to your carry, you were saying, you know, get a procedure done. I think the procedure is pretty straightforward. 
It is. Yeah, it just, it just from now on, it's five it? or six bullets, and then we get them to, to agree. We agree. And I, I don't see where the negotiation is required. I mean, my concern would just be we, we would not capture their attention, and then we'd still be where we are now. That's why I'm The last forward. I knew, the conversation seemed to be the selectmen said, okay, we're going to work with our highway department and figure out what we're going to do. And the cemetery trustees that evening, anyway, seemed to be, okay, go ahead and do that. So. Yeah, I, I would want something in writing <coughs> that we both acknowledge that's how it's going to work. One, it gives the people who are actually doing the thing some guidelines <coughs> about what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. And I think it clarifies the situation between the two groups because they're autonomous. Um, but if we have some kind of procedure and they sign off on it, I think that's the way to proceed. Plus then the supervisor of the cemeteries or the custodian will know what the rules are so we can follow them. So, so I just want to get the, I don't mind the procedural thing. I just want to, if we're moving in this direction of the funeral policy, well, they're digging in. We don't see any money transfer. They just kind of do it all. Right. And the custodian is the one that works but get the layout them. right and properly and so forth. I don't mind a procedural issue. I well, think we should move forward on this. But well, we're still involved with the, the plots. If somebody, in terms of your example, doesn't own a plot, we still are involved with that. But that's yes, I understand that issue. Yeah. So, so you may want to consider just you know some kind of a fee, <coughs> fee for layout and filing. Yeah. I don't know how else they get paid for it. Unless, unless the town's just going to go with it. No, I understand what you're saying, John. I, I mean, it, it's just a matter. It still has to be drawn up and say this is it, as opposed to take a look at this. And yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, this that's, is that's the procedure. Fine. That's fine. But I just want to but, put it forward that you know we're in agreement with the uh, highway supervisor when moving this right. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that they talked about was the file cabinet and all the record stuff. If Randy does it. The stuff's already on the highway department computer and already in there, and he knows where everything is, so you might as well just leave everything right where it is, mm -hmm. and he can just go into the mm -hmm. highway department building and do what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to worry about that aspect of it. What would the future custodian suggest in terms of a fee for the town services for doing? I, I know one yeah. town does $50. I know we have to check around, but I don't know. Okay. Has to be that much, but at least ought to be 25. Okay. Because you got to go up and you know, kind of on demand and lay it out. Mm -hmm. You got to do quite a bit of paperwork to enter in the computer and get it to the town hall and okay. enter, enter it in. You know, like I say, there's a couple, we entered into a kind of a plot plan on the computer and then mm -hmm. a list. So it <coughs> takes a little time. So I would suggest you ask the town administrator to work with the Highway <coughs> supervisor in the future potential. custodian potential. <laughs> potential. So how are, we, how are we doing cremations? I don't know. I mean, it's, okay. it's not, it sounds like the town trying to own, but who does it? Whether the custodian does it or the highway department does it hasn't been determined. Okay. And maybe depends who they get for custodian. Custodian may not want to do it. So, if I'm in, I have no problem. With it's hand digging a hole, so it's an hour, an hour and a half to dig the hole. It's not like it's that big a deal. And we have a fee for that already, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know what that is. So it's a hundred dollars unless it's after three o'clock right. on a weekday, and then it's one hundred twenty-five dollars. I think it's one fifty on a, with a cremation bowl. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So maybe the three of you can work that yep. out. With the idea that when it's all signed off on all of us, that the trustees of the cemeteries sign off on it as well. At a duly noticed meeting, you don't have to put that in the minutes. I think Steve did, he can tell me if I'm wrong, he did say that if I was a potential custodian and I wasn't available on a given weekend, that one of the highway people could do it. 
But that's why the 150 should probably get raised because they're going to end up going and they have to go dig it, sit there and wait for it to be done and then fill it back in. And then that's overtime that's going to be coming out of my budget that they're going to have to. But that leads us to another conversation that we can have a different day. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, we'll proceed. I'm still up. Still up. Are you still up? Oh, okay. <coughs> oh yeah. yeah. All right. So my plan for the swap shop was this: the fence. If you're driving out and the swap shop's on your left, there's a fence on your right. Um, if you fill in up to the fence, you can park 12 cars in there on a 45 degree angle, lining down the fence. And I, that's the best option that I can come up with. It's, and then you're, you're not at 90, you're not backing out into people because they wanted to put jersey barriers out the corner of the building straight down and all I could picture is someone backing out and going right into the building with people coming out. It's this way you have the best sight distance because you can see up and over the hill. Um, I propose putting a crosswalk on top of a speed table right there. You know they have mm -hmm. the, whole, the makeshift speed bumps. If you pave in a speed table and put a crosswalk on the top of it they have to slow down if people use a crosswalk they have to slow down and then you put a yield to pedestrian sign up and then you put where it says no parking on the swap shop now put up a handicap placard and, and Steve you already have the material for the fill I have the material for the fill but not for the top dressing I have all the tailings from the sand that they've been screening for the past few years that's got <coughs> anywhere from you know three to four inches all the way down to two inch rock with some mixed in dirt so it's good base to fill in um, the other thing we could do to make it look better if that's the way we're going to go is buy some of the concrete barriers and line them along the back and move the fence back five feet if you move the fence back five feet, you're not cutting down any trees, you're not encroaching on any of the walking things, you're just giving yourself that little bit of extra room. And the fence needs to get, the fence is all destroyed anyway from snow removal, I guess. So it needs to get replaced anyway. Um, that's the best option that I can come up with and it gives you the most space for the most vehicles you could park. Steve, you had, um, I think Toby had mentioned there was an issue with water. Is this going to help remove some of the standing water during rainstorms and stuff? It's on the complete opposite side where his water issue is. Okay. Unless you go in there and grade it all out and hog all the dirt out and then spend a lot of money with pavement in there, you're not going to get rid of the water problem unless we stop cars from parking because that's the issue. We could fill it in with dirt, but in two weeks, three weeks, with cars pulling in and out all the time, there's going to be another hole there, and there's going to be more water. With respect to the possibility of moving the fence in toward the forested area, we may have a problem with encroachment on the conservation easement that's held by the Society for the Protection of New Hampshire Forests. So I would need to read that language carefully and uh, confer with Steve and see if that, actually I'd have to confer with the Forest Society as well, see if that would be viable. Because uh, uh, right now the fence goes on like a half moon shape and all I was talking about was just cutting the half moon shape in a straight line. So there may be no problem. No, but so it, the, there'd be no trees cut down or anything. I just, that's the best issue I got. Mm -hmm. And then we could, you could even do it where you don't move the fence. You put it inside those pieces of concrete. 
So you put the jersey, the concrete right along the existing fence line and then put the fence on top of the concrete. Well, Bill, would you uh, check with the appropriate people and see? That gives us some flexibility as to what we do. I will do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But I think it's a, it's a good design. Though. I understand yeah. you're driving out, so you just park at an angle. When you back out, it's, it's easy to see, not 90 degrees. So I think the design looks good. We just got to check in this fence line issue. Anything from the police chief in terms of how this? Well, Steve and I met out there. Yeah. I think that's the best possible outcome. Uh, you know, still have the issue of people crossing the street. <coughs> Not much you can do without. The only other concern, I talked to Steve about it, um, is people launching off. They get in their car, they put it in drive instead of reverse, or they pull in and hit the gas and launching off. So maybe something like Randy put down a little river park. Um, you know, the old telephone poles with just a six by six on it or something, just to give it a little bit to keep them from going. I don't know if that's possible, but that's one of the about the main concern I have is you you're going to be elevated. A little you can bit. buy those curb stops too. Yeah, that's the other thing you talk about the curb, the concrete curb mm -hmm. stops. It's something that I'll remind them. Hey, <laughs> don't go any further. But other than that, yeah, it gives a lot of room for parking, and um, we've got the proper signage and the crosswalk there. They can be okay. Sounds good. I think it's a good plan. I think you should move forward with it. How much of it can you do before the blizzard gets here? <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> I was going to start it, but then obviously Mother Nature had different plans, so I'll do what I can. Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand too. <laughs> as we get as we get time, we'll go over them and plug away at it. So. Just hope it doesn't snow every day. The dump's not open. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. <coughs> that man is fire chief. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, Mr. Uh, Stevens, don't be leaving now. Don't, don't be leaving. leaving. Don't be don't leaving now. Come back, Randy. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Randy, we need to talk. <laughs> we got you, <laughs> Um I'm here with my Heritage Commission hat on today. We all know that Randy has done so much. And every time you turn around, you find something else that Randy has done. Uh, you look at the pictures, you look at all these things that have been Randy. Well, as you know, the Heritage Commission has put up banners. We started in the uh, 250th, and uh, I say, the Heritage Commission put them up. No, Randy put them up. And <laughs> so we have a special one that was put up for Randy who was in town, and we'd like Randy to have it as part of the memory of putting up banners and working for the town and, and how you're appreciated, Randy. Thank you very much. I don't know whether it's going to fit over your bed, but... <laughs> it's got a few extra names on it. Too. Yeah. Good memory. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. This could be a table runner. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Just a little a shade. A shade? <laughs> I think you should put it above his bed so you can just lay in there and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There you go. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> now, Scott and them, the fire chief. You got the picture. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Good evening. You're welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm here tonight to ask the board to accept a grant from the 2019 Volunteer Fire Systems Fund. Uh, I put in for this so that the fire department could purchase uh, wildland fire gear. As you guys know, our structural equipment only lasts for 10 years, and forestry equipment is the same. 
Um, it's kind of been put on the back burner the last couple of years to, to bring up all of our structural gear. Uh, this grant it go, is good for up to $2,000 and it's a 50-50 match. So to outfit all of the members on the department with a new helmet, with a Nomex shirt and pants, um, it would be approximately $4,923.25. The funds would um, put towards that would be two thousand dollars. So we'd have to come up with uh, two thousand nine hundred twenty-three dollars and twenty-five cents, which we have in our budget and our um, protective gear. So good. I love grant money. You do have a motion. Yeah, I have one coming. So I move to accept a grant in the amount of $2,000 from the 2019 Volunteer Fire Assistance Fund grant program for forest fire personnel protective equipment as presented by the fire chief. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you for all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Electron Scott Busby to talk about the historical marker. Um, the Heritage Commission has been um, working with the designer to create um, historical markers because the town hall, the tool shed with the tramp room, and the Lee Historical Society have been placed on the register of historical places in the state of New Hampshire. So we thought it would be nice if we had some signage to put on those particular buildings. So I'm here tonight with a, a real one, uh, so you can take a look at it, but we have one made up so that it had the name of the particular structure as well as the date that it was uh, created. So I'm asking permission from the board to be able to put these up on the three buildings. So take a peek at it. And that's the weatherproof <coughs> material, or does that, it have to go in something else? Nope, nope. It is designed to be outside. Yeah, it? It's called, the product is called board. Dye Bond. <coughs> two pieces of aluminum sandwiched between some um, weather resistant material. Um, it's been around for a while. Um, there's a couple of different things to do, and the companies uh, recommend this for outside. Uh, in terms of placing it on the structure, um, they recommend putting four holes in each of the corners and attaching it to the building that way. Well, the new building would not be on the state register of right, historical right. places. <laughs> maybe 50 years from now, maybe, but not, not now. So. Well, Ms. Selectman thinks that's a wonderful idea. Thank you for thinking of it. Do you have a spot that you think it were on each uh, building? No, that can, I, I, some place where it's visible. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure exactly where, maybe it in terms of the tool shed maybe on the front or the side mm -hmm. as people go by. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the, the uh, historical society, probably in the front by the door or something like that. In terms of town hall, maybe some place where the people come in. It, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that will work out. Uh, if you have any suggestions. Well, since we're talking about markers, though, the only time we talk about markers for the barns? It, it, yeah, that's, I haven't heard back, but I've been we've been focusing on this. But yes, that's still something we want to do. The other part of this, um, there are eight, I always get this wrong, eight or nine properties that are on the state register. And what the historical, uh, excuse me, Heritage Commission would like to do is to offer this design to those particular um, homeowners mm -hmm. and see if they're interested. Uh, and then the Heritage Commission would pay for those particular signs to be placed up there. Um, but we need their permission. Mm -hmm. uh, some people might be interested, some people might not. So, okay. um, but we thought it would be a, a nice thing so that people know, you know, how old some of our structures are. Um, Absolutely, it's good. more information about it. So, but yeah, the, we're still doing the barn thing, um, but we can go back to it. Okay, well, um, I'm sure um, we're all in favor of Absolutely, this. thank you. So, can I have? Oh, I, I move to allow the Heritage Commission to place historical marker signs on the town hall, the tool shed with the tramp room and the Lee Historical Society building. Second. <coughs> no discussion. We're good. I have no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
explored anyways that's number one uh, number two it was very crowded of course that midterm election was a real kicker anyways but there was a lot of people and it was quite dense i, I felt for the people that and were the lines were very long yeah for people registering the vote it was it just wasn't enough chairs <coughs> standing deep and finally they went out the hallway people the, the, the people working there did the volunteers did a great job keeping everybody in line but but then we had people crisscrossing because they're trying to get the flow right so I think it's something we should investigate yeah I think it's not just it's not just the size of the room though we were to a certain extent a little bit understaffed mm -hmm. and also I think the next time there's no way we anticipated that many people that wanted to register to vote prior to voting on the same day uh, and that's really what we yeah. had slowed things down a lot so yeah, it needs to be, certainly needs to be looked at to see what improvements can be made. You have some comment, Mr. Bugby? Um, I'm just glad that we're not Durham because they signed up 3,000 people that day. So we did oh. three or 400. Yeah. So that's like order of magnitude, 3,000 sign-ups. Yes. Wow. They were. Yeah, they were, they were very busy. I don't mind, trying, I don't mind checking it out. Um, it would be nice to see if we can get to school for free. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> oh, we did a, I did a tour of the new um, additions and stuff. Oh. It's pretty good. They're going to have, what is it, that <coughs> December 5th, I think it is. December 5th. That that open house. Yeah. So it looks pretty good. I would think I would get more for half a million dollars for the up front, but I guess not. So but the rooms look very nice. They should be done by that. That's a <laughs> Oh, no, no, I meant the, the front part. The front, no, part. the front part. The front part, yeah, the front part. Okay, so we, we can explore it. There's a school board meeting that we were invited to. The governor is supposed to be attending. They're going to be dedicating the new oh, no. parts. What is that? What time? I think it's the 5th. Is it there? That's that thing that came that's across. Our that's our volunteer dinner. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I would just like to say that um, if it is being held here again, and I know this one was in November and the times changed and stuff, but if we can rent light towers or something, because we had multiple calls that night, later in the night, with everybody walking across the parking lot, it was extremely hard to see. Um, I had a couple of my people reach out to me and just say that they were very concerned. Um, with responding to calls just because there were so many people yep. mm -hmm. in the morning when I came in I was shocked just like everybody else they had cars on both sides of George Bennett Road up the side street um, we try and give this whole side of the building to everybody for parking so we just block it off in that back corner so we can have that back so I think when it all happened that we fit enough people and it worked and it flowed but lately I remember the presidential election they were having people walk into our side of the building 
Um, and then they were using the EOC room to register everybody. And I had people coming into my office constantly asking me where, where to register. And we're trying to get stuff done as well. And I know Tommy feels that sometimes too. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the amount of people in this building. But my biggest concern was the lighting around here. It's just awful for that. And for one night, if we can rent some light towers or something to help that, um, that was my biggest concern with them. I also spoke to the town administrator about the lights out here because when people were going out, especially after dark, mm -hmm. they, there's a light above, a little one above the door as you go out, but then there's nothing along the sidewalks. It's dark. Oh, so we have the same thing. issue with the corner out. Yeah, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm having the LED vendor look into putting additional lighting on the building. It's not that there, it's not that there are lights that are not working. There Just, are not enough lights on the building. Yeah. So. Sounds like a plan. So we're looking into that. Okay. So the purchase of the property from the Fleet Church, uh, this is the most recent answer that I got from the church's attorney in terms of are we all set for a closing for December 14th, which was the tentative date that I had been given. Uh, her answer is that she is waiting for a definitive answer from the New Hampshire <coughs> Conference of UCC Churches to confirm that it will sign the release of the right of reverter at its executive committee meeting next week, <coughs> or whether it will have to circulate a ballot to know what the timing on that will be. Now, that's the first I've heard that it can't, that it may not be just the executive committee. All along, I thought what we were being told <coughs> was that the executive committee just had to sign off on the right of reverter. Um, so that apparently is now what we're looking for, and I, I believe that that is going to happen, or at least knowing better whether it can be the executive committee uh, sometime after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So I guess that December 14th date is now more tentative than I had thought it was going to be. So, um, but they're not waiting for anything from us. We're just waiting for the church. And they've got signed off from the mortgagee? Yes. Yeah. Yep, that's all set. Okay. Um, we've received an inquiry uh, from someone actually inquiring for their parent who has a disability and is wondering whether the town issues hardship abatements. Hardship <coughs> abatements are allowed under the statute, um, and although it's that language that the selectmen have the authority to do that as justice may whatever the word is, desire, not desire, but um, but as you could see in the agenda packet, you know other towns that do it have a, a, an application in place and a policy in place because I think that the last thing that you would want is to do it on any kind of a haphazard basis. It's a very in-depth procedure they have. Uh, I mean, I and I understand why. It's kind of a big deal if you're going to be forgiving someone from paying any portion of their taxes or even if it's just any interest or penalties that might um, have accrued. So if the board is interested, I will take the examples and try to draft something up, um, hopefully for the next meeting. How is this different than the state program that gives people, there's a hardship thing for the state? There is, and if you looked at what some of the other towns do, they require someone to explore and exhaust all other possible avenues of relief mm -hmm. before they come to the town. <coughs> so incorporate that kind of language into any policy that, or procedure that we might adopt. It, I don't, maybe it's possible that even if they qualify mm -hmm. for that, they still can't pay their taxes. But again, this, is, this would be, I think, for a, a disability, someone with a disability. But didn't I read on one of the sheets of paper also they apply that if, for instance, they lost their home in a fire? Um, well, that's a different statute. That that's a different set of laws. Okay. Because I think we did that. Do we have we've one done that applies to that? We've done that. We've yeah. done that before. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, but we've just done that before. Well, that's there's no there's no like this one has like four or five pages of information you have to fill out relative right, to 
financial situations and so on. Right, but the one about a fire is a very different specific statute and it's pretty easy to tell if someone's house is burned down. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not, well, uh, are you really disabled? Are you, are you, you know, under what definition and what level of um, financial need are we going to establish? So okay. that, that's a different set of uh, laws. I think we should move forward with kind of this kind of interesting and look into it. Hopefully come from a little bit more concise one than the ones we were looking at. But yeah. as you said, I don't want to start a, a role on this. Obviously be very specific. Right. If this arises, we'll be able to deal with it. Um, even though I don't think either one of these, I think there was another one where I saw where they have their um, welfare officer do the analysis yeah. because they're used to doing a very yes. similar intake. So that's probably how I would draft ours? Yes. Okay. Good suggestion. Okay. And then we did talk about dates for meetings um, with the TCVC to hear a presentation, I think, for the select board from mm -hmm. the architect. Um, and December 10th was a date that had been floated out but we never completed the discussion with the select board to see whether that was a date that would work. It's a non-meeting Monday. Monday. A non-meeting Monday. A non-meeting Monday. A non-meeting Monday. So sounds like a good non-meeting. We're going to meet on the non-meeting. Non 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 but then it won't be a non-meeting. We'll have a meeting. The other thing in terms of, that was the date that they gave us in terms of getting because yeah. they'll have about 95 percent of the stuff done mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about having a, a non-meeting presentation so that we can just deal with that particular because they're going to just go through a powerpoint presentation that's probably the template for the public meetings that we're going to mm -hmm. do the presentation so it'd be nice to run through it with you gentlemen get your opinions mm -hmm. and thoughts because this is what we're going to be presenting if you're not comfortable with it then we shouldn't be presenting it to the public. So I agree. Um, <coughs> that was the tenth. So I think tenth's a good idea. Six thirty. December tenth. Mm -hmm. Denise will call me. What flag are we crossing? We have an it arrangement. Works. <laughs> it works. It works. Okay. Um, that's everything I have. To accept the consent agenda as presented. Um, can I ask, is there something, because if we want to talk about something, we usually pull it out. Yes. Um, can we ask Mr. Hum if he wants to say a few words or about his. About his no, not really. Don't have any need. Okay. All right. Have two highly qualified applicants. Okay. Yeah, I read there. They're by a boost. They are they are qualified. You bet. Sorry. I just want to be came last way so fine. Sorry. Okay. Consent agendas. All those, in favor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> We're killers. Okay. Oh my goodness. There's a lot to sign tonight. Are we paying the county via ACH, or are we running a check again? No, we always drive the check over. Oh. Do you need a due. check runner person again? Sure. I think it's due by December 17th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we have a police? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, just give me a call. Here we go. <laughs> um, well, Mr. Brown is signing his life away. Um, the tree lighting is on the first. Mm -hmm. Can we have, they've already talked to you or not? They have not, but. Could I talk to you and say, could we have somebody out there to help? Yeah. 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 Yeah
What time are you looking at? Um, the tree lighting is at 4 and the conch is at 4.30. So I'd say like 3.45 to like 4.15 maybe. Take care of it. Just somebody out there with the lights to make them slow down going around the yeah. corner. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah, well, I'll have two up there. And for the people that are appointed tonight, you just need to go to the town clerk's office and get sworn in. So that's the second part of the process. Oh, okay. So, Anytime. Uh, what next time she's open? Next time she's open. When? Monday, she's open Wednesday. Wednesday. Monday, Wednesday. Friday. Yeah. Not this Friday. Friday. Not this Friday. Tomorrow though. No, Wednesday. Wednesday. What's today? Monday. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You sure you're ready? <laughs> it's World right, Toilet Day. Wednesday. It's World <laughs> Toilet Day. <laughs> Thank you. Just to confirm, it's Saturday. Yes, it's Saturday. Okay. First. Yeah, it's usually on Sunday. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. It's okay. the first. Yeah. Yeah. How's your husband? Something else I have to deal with, probably. <laughs> what I gotta do? I, I think he gets, he feels uh, anxious or awkward in those positions when he's yeah. being acknowledged. Yeah. 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 Probably right. Yeah, I don't know what Michelle's gonna think about having that above her bed. That's <laughs> like. I'm not gonna let it go. I'm gonna call him tomorrow and offer to come over and help him. <laughs> yeah, I'm tall. <laughs> well, of course, that's gonna kind of obliterate the mirror. He already has that. <laughs> <laughs> from now when people are trolling YouTube and they're looking at this meeting they're thinking, jeez, that's what those people talk about. <laughs>
Secretary to get the appropriate acknowledgments produced. I'll second it. Was I supposed to? I did get a nomination. Who'd you get? I know. What's today? Was I supposed to bring that in today? I completely forgot. Yeah, because we're hoping to present it on the, the dinner. Okay. Um, Who'd you get? More done. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Mr. Bugby, it's your responsibility. Oh, Be prepared. Okay. All right. Did I just make a motion? No. <laughs> what just happened? You did. It doesn't mean anything. Well, you can say whatever you want. I mean, we have to can listen you to you. You, you weren't recognized. What? Scott is going to work well, with you on the volunteer of the year. To get the, to get the uh, oh, okay. awards for the volunteer dinner recipients. Uh, and the Board of Selectmen has given Mr. Bugby pure authority to make that decision. Oh. Do you see any issues? <laughs> um, the TCVC is, well, one member of the TCVC is meeting with the DOT engineer tomorrow morning at Karen Rossi's office to talk about access points to Mass Road. Um, the TCVC is meeting tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock to take that information and decide in terms of building layouts and things like that. Um, um, Valerie Bretzinger is working on the library and the new town hall. Um, they need to know where the buildings are going to be located. So. Mm -hmm. But you both should have got the update, so you can take a look at that. Um, we also have on the agenda for tomorrow um, creating the two dates or finding the two dates for doing the public presentations, possibly later in December or in January. So those are our tasks that we have at the moment. So we will be meeting um, on the 10th at 6.30 with you guys to do the presentation. Um, I think that's it. <coughs> Anything else? John, did I missed? Give them updates. Okay. I think that's it. Um, I'm I'm meeting with uh, the fire chief 
tomorrow after the meeting with Karen Rossi and DOT, um, just for his initial input um, on uh, driveways, parking lots, uh, cisterns, location. So. I queried the town hall staff oh, yeah. about a separate entrance. Yep. And the town hall staff doesn't feel that it's necessary to have a separate entrance. Okay. All but right. the town clerk tax collector wasn't in today. Okay. So. Well, when she's in, oh, when was she in today? She was not in today. Was she supposed to be open? Or? The, the, uh, Liz was there. Yes. Oh, but, okay. But I wasn't able to talk about so, her. Maybe, so maybe, hopefully she's in Wednesday. Wednesday. And if the town secretary, or excuse me, the finance officer can let me know when the check needs to go, I can plan to do that. In front of the planning oh, board, it was any canceled. Any more uh, comments, discussion? Make a motion to adjourn? Oh, no, I was just saying that from the planning board point of view is that Bedrock Gardens asked for a continuance, so no decision is made as of yet. My golly, how long is that going to drag it's, off? It's been a while, but that's a lot of activity in that room. <laughs> um, the other thing, um, the spreadsheet that you sent out, mm -hmm. so we need the evaluations. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you've got any feedback from them yet in terms of when that is. I haven't gotten any feedback yet, but they all know. What's the, well, I suppose the deadline is June 30th, 2019. Well, it is, but, but you know, we the, try to roll it into the budget. So mm, I sometime. would say we'd want to know before, well, you would want to have your numbers probably by the first public budget hearing. Which is January, January 3rd. So mm. let us... Mm -hmm. Evaluations to us by the fifth, which is our next meeting, mm. and then we'll talk. Right, fifth is, or December the third? Fifth? No, December third. Third, excuse me, the yeah. third, and then we'll have a, a discussion in terms of raises and stuff on the seventeenth. Yeah. Does mm -hmm. that sound? It sounds good. Okay. So hopefully the department heads have done. Mm -hmm. Their part so but that's like two weeks so even if they haven't they should don't think so. well mm -hmm. have you reminded them mm -hmm. of you should be all right anybody else mm -hmm. make a motion to adjourn second all in favor aye, aye. wow